Hey guys, what's up? Caleb Downing here, and today we're going to talk about this fella right here. This is my interpretation of the Q Sugar Weasel. Let's get into it. All right, so let's get down to dirty on this thing. This is not, 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 not. Hopefully I didn't say too many and it's a double negative. This is not a Q Sugar Weasel. There is not a single piece or part on this build that is provided or made by Q. As far as I'm aware of, this is all my stuff, all right, or pieces and parts that I've put together. What I like to call this guy is a jailbroke sugar weasel. Hopefully I'm saying the right thing, a jailbroke sugar weasel, meaning I took the image of the sugar weasel, basically its capabilities, what it was supposed to do, and I applied that to a new build built it up to look like a sugar weasel and to kind of act like one. I am not trying to make something that is the same. I am not trying to say this is the same thing as or just as good as. I'm saying this is my funsies interpretation of the sugar weasel. Hopefully that gets everything out of the way. That's kind of our disclaimer for the video. Nobody provided anything that I'm aware of. Maybe the handguard, because we do work with Breek Arms, uh, but nobody provided really anything to put this guy together and build it. We decided what we wanted to do and we built this thing. So, for sake of this whole video, I'm going to do a quick little specs comparison between the Sugar Weasel and this guy just to kind of show you some of the similarities and then really what's different. There's, I mean, there's from 50 yards away, 30,000 foot view, whatever you want to call it, they're the same, but then they're not the same when you really get down to specs. So for the specs people that are really interested in this kind of stuff, because this is kind of a firearms review, it's kind of not, it's a build review kind of thing, but let's just get into specs. And then we'll talk about this guy real quick, and then we'll go shoot it. All right, specs here, real quick. Uh, the Sugar Weasel it has a clear anodized M16 receiver set, upper and lower, and pretty much all the aluminum stuff on here is clear coat anodized. That's on the Sugar Weasel, not mine. My stuff, my jailbroke version, is all Cerakote. So the Cerakote receiver set, Sugar Weasel's barrel is a 300 blackout, seven inch, one in five twist. Aha, mine is a Ballistic Advantage 300 blackout, six inch, one in seven twist. Very different there. This, the Sugar Weasel's muzzle has a 25 degree taper, kind of like how SIG does theirs with the 5 eighths by 24 thread. Mine is a straight up, since it's Ballistic Advantage, a 90 degree um, shoulder with 5 eighths by 24 thread pitch. Sugar Weasel has their cherry bomb muzzle device. I don't do that because I don't have any Q stuff. So I have on my jailbroke version the dead air one port or single port chemo mount or brake. Sugar Weasel has their for their gas system, they have a pistol length gas system with an adjustable gas block. I have a pistol length gas system, but I have a Breek Arms standard mil spec gas block. Sugar Weasel has their own trigger. I think they make their own trigger. I'm not 100% sure on that one, uh, but I have an Anderson Manufacturing single stage trigger it's nothing fancy it's 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 simply a it's kind of a nickel plated trigger there's nothing really super crazy about it uh sugar weasel that has a custom six position sba3 stabilizing pistol brace i believe i have pretty much the same thing as far as that goes because i have an sba3 brace i have some different stuff going on on the inside as far as my buffer and buffer tube or my buffer and spring but it is a buff the buffer tube and the brace are sba th or are sb tactical uh brands the Sugar Weasel, again, has clear coat anodized 6-inch M-Lock handguard. I don't do the clear anodizing. I have a Cerakoted Breek Arms. I believe it's their RG2. It may be their original um, RG, but they're 5 and a quarter inch handguard. Mine's Cerakoted. Sugar Weasel has, again, clear coat anodized charging handle. I've got a standard mil-spec charging handle. The Sugar Weasel has a 90-degree fire control safety selector. I think that's pretty much just mil-spec. I can't confirm that right now because um, I don't have one in hand to actually confirm it, but I have a standard mil-spec 90-degree uh, safety selector. So that's kind of the same. Interesting stuff here is the Sugar Weasel's weight, and I'm assuming this is completely naked and stripped down, just the firearm, is 4.7 pounds. Mine, my jailbroke version, is 4.9 pounds, all stripped down, bare naked, nothing on it, no mags, no anything, just the firearm itself. The Sugar Weasel's length in short configuration is 22 and a quarter inches long. In long configuration, they say it measures to 25 inches. My Jailbroke version is 21.9 inches short and 24. 
0.5 inches long. So hopefully that gives you guys some specs and kind of looking at the comparisons, at least on paper, because we don't have an actual sugar weasel to compare this guy to. That would be cool, but we don't have a sugar weasel to actually like stand these up side by side and show you and everything. Um, the interesting thing to me is that the weight of the firearms is very close. However, this, I believe it is, I believe the sugar weasel, ah, there's the sugar weasel and the honey badger. I can't remember if they both deleted the forward assist. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but mine definitely has a forward assist, so there's some extra weight there. I use a semi-automatic only bolt carrier group, which has a cutout underneath it uh, where it cuts that shelf out, cuts that little ridge out. That actually removes some weight, so that probably balances itself out as far as having a forward assist um, and having a semi-automatic bolt carrier group. Uh, the barrels is really another big thing because that really boils down to the capabilities of a firearm and the barrel is kind of the heart and soul of the gun in a way. There's a couple pieces and parts you could say about that. But I've got a Ballistic Advantage barrel, which I really like Ballistic Advantage. They've never treated me wrong. They've always been good stuff for me. For 300 Blackout, it has a 1 in 7 inch twist, which is great for 5.56 or 223. And it's sufficient for most uh, 300 blackout. However, when you start getting into these really short barrels and you start shooting subs, big fat 220 grain, you know, heavy stuff, you need that faster twist rate to stabilize everything. You should have that. That's my understanding of it. Um, I haven't seen keyholing or anything with this guy, so I do believe I'm getting good stabilization with my rounds. Uh, mostly what I shoot out of here is 145 grain Wolf. That's my supersonic stuff. And then subsonic, I think it's s and I believe they have a 200 grain um, projectile, and that's my subsonic stuff. And again, I see no keyholing, so I do believe we're getting sufficient stabilization. However, I don't shoot this guy out past 100 yards. I really, nowadays, I don't even shoot it at 100 yards. I'm more like 75 and in, uh, just because of the ranges that I get to go shoot and stuff. I don't shoot this guy very far. So at those ranges, I'm not seeing significant, you know, destabilization of the round. So the purpose of this build, as you, if you guys have seen my channel very long or, or been around here very long and heard me talk about stuff, I like to talk about keeping things in their wheelhouse and having specific purposes for things. This is honestly probably the most specific niche firearm, niche niche firearm that I assembled and I put together. Okay, and the purpose of this guy was to fill a role of having a rifle ballistics in as small of a little thing as possible and to utilize that when I was used to be working uh, some security stuff, right? Some church security stuff. That was this guy's purpose. I carried a pistol at the time, right? Just concealed carry stuff, nothing really special, just nine millimeter stuff. So I didn't want a nine millimeter carbine because that's just kind of stupid in my opinion. Why would you have that when you already carry a nine millimeter pistol? Carry something else. And so a 300 blackout was the most viable option. A shorty little 5.56, five, it's not that great. I've carried one of those, used one of those when I was a cop that's just loud, obnoxious, and terrible. Do not advise getting those fun range toys, but not really practical. For 300 blackout, however, it's very practical. And I built this guy not to shoot subs, because we'll see later, he doesn't cycle subs very well at all. And he wasn't built for that. I didn't tune him for that. I don't have an adjustable gas block, so I had to build this thing primarily to cycle one or the other, either subs or supers. And I chose supers because the idea was to get, like I said, rifle ballistics out of a short of a package. I hate that word, sorry, I used it. As short of an overall system as possible. All right, to be honest, this guy got to about 90% finished, that status of 90% finished. Never settled 100% on an optic, never really settled 100% on like one can to use on this guy because, and even the ammo and everything else, the whole reason to that is because about the time I was almost done putting this guy together and getting it like vetted and tested and I can rely on it, we ended up moving. 
right? So we left that place and we moved up here to Alaska. And so this guy's basically just set on the shelf and I haven't utilized him a whole lot. I've shot him some as a host for 300 blackout stuff. Not a whole lot because I have some other 300 blackouts that will shoot both supers and subs a lot more reliably. And so I use those for suppressor hosts. This guy is specifically made, like I've said 16 million times, for supers. And supers don't sound usually all that great when suppressed. I mean, you still got a supersonic crack. It's still just going to be loud. Um, so this, again, this being such a niche, niche firearm, I don't end up utilizing it a whole lot. But he's already built out, so I'm not really going to take it apart and make something else with it. It's just going to be kind of what it is. He's going to live this way. The main issues that we've had with this guy, and I've said it a couple times before, is the cycling issues. Even with supers, uh, at the time, I don't think Wolf made any supersonic ammo, or I don't think Wolf had they might have made it, but I would. I, it wasn't accessible. The Wolf uh, steel case stuff, that stuff wasn't very accessible. So I was having to load my own rounds, which I believe, again, because I didn't get it solidified, I don't remember exactly. I think they were 124 grains uh, projectiles, and I was pushing them as fast as I could to reliably cycle out of this guy. You know, I, I, I was just tuning the load so that it would get proper ejection and would cycle. I needed this guy to cycle. For this guy's given role, he had to cycle. Because if he wasn't, then he's just a toy. Um, so some of the things that we ran into, that's one reason why we uh, changed out um, the regular bolt carrier group in here to a semi-automatic only bolt carrier group because that bolt carrier group is lighter and we needed less mass to be moving around, all right? We also changed out and played around with the springs and the buffer back here. I believe the buffer back here right now is just a standard mil-spec buffer. There's nothing special about it. It's not heavy. It's not excessively light or redu reduce light, whatever it is. But the spring is a Sprinko yellow spring, which is the reduced power spring. So when you combine all of that together, with the rifle length gas system and you have like a like a half an inch of dwell time or maybe an inch of dwell time not much at all you put all that together it will shoot supers fine you suppress it it will shoot supers just fine it will shoot supers well subs not always not every time it just depends especially depending on the size of the suppressor if you put a bigger suppressor on here a lot of times you'll get more reliability out of it with subs and that's really just because you're adding more back pressure from that can to cycle the system kind of kind of that's my understanding of it but even with that it's this is a supersonic gun <sighs> This is the problem with this guy. Not quite 100% reliable. That hurts through the ears. That's how bad that is. That's one shot. I heard that through the ears. That's 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 how concussive this guy is. Surprised it didn't shatter my camera. That's supers though. That is way, way better. But for a smaller package, you're not going to be carrying around that big of a suppressor. That felt funky. Oh, you know what that was? That was subs, not cycling. Haha. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, that was some subs. So you can definitely tell the difference between subs and supers. <sighs> 
Ja. Here we have the Law Tactical folder installed, and as you can see, with that added weight of that extender that you have to have in there, it was causing some major cycling issues, especially with subsonic. Well, shoot the dirt. People don't complain too much. All right, so we kind of talked about the why, we kind of talked about what this guy's for, um, and really, this is a funsies project. I like to call this my jailbroke, well, like I said, my jailbroke um, sugar weasel, but I got a couple other jailbroke firearms to where I like the look of a firearm, but I'm not willing to spend two, three thousand dollars on it or whatever it might be, and I want to just piece it together just to scratch that itch and to have some fun. And so this is kind of an encouragement to you guys. If you might see, a, I don't play video games really. Um, I think I get addicted to them too much and play them too much, so that's why I don't do it. Uh, but there's a lot of cool firearms and stuff on there, and I see a lot of other people posting stuff about, yeah, they built this gun off of this video game. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it's awesome because it teaches you a lot about the firearms that you're going to be using when you assemble it, when you put it together, because you have to learn the intricacies of it. You've got to learn the gas system. You've got to learn the buffer system. you got to learn where you can cut weight, where you can add weight. What do you need the firearm to do? So I would encourage you guys, if you have one of those guns or you have the envision or the, the the scrat or the itch you have the itch to get or build a gun if it's feasible save up for it put it together put do some research and find the pieces and parts to to scratch that itch if it's feasible don't go into debt and doing all that kind of stuff getting firearms it's not worth that um, but if it's feasible go do it it's fun it's educational and I think it's it's awesome being able to work with your hands and build and assemble and put something together that you can use whether it be for specific purposes or just straight up for kicks and giggles all right guys I hope you found that fun um, I hope you found it kind of encouraging get out there build something it's always fun to do that um, I think it's fun that's what this whole jailbreak series is about is building the fun stuff they just stuff that you might find is fun so what firearms do you guys think of in your mind when you're like man I'd love to buy that gun it just costs way too much I wonder if I can build it what's that firearm for you hmm? maybe we'll be able to build it uh, maybe you'll be able to build it I don't know but that's it y'all be good to be safe appreciate you guys hopefully we'll catch you guys in the next video see you